What's up, everybody? It's your favorite way to skin a cat's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at Mastermind Creations reformatted Jaguar. This is on loan to me. Hey, you guys are killing me for that. I don't know what you want me to do. I can either have no reviews, or I can have reviews of stuff I'm not gonna buy that people are kind enough to lend me. Not sure what you want. But it's on loan to me, nonetheless, from a gentleman who you can follow on Instagram at Queen City Robo Show. He's got Rewind as his avatar, so I appreciate it. Look, we already looked at this mold with the pet, but with the pet, we went from pet mode to robot mode so we can cover it which is the only reason why I'm really looking at this so that we can cover both directions of transformation and go from robot mode to cat mode in order to do so we need to start with accessories he comes with Ravage's sort of two standard hip missiles. They're the gray plastic here, sculpted well enough, and then the, the tips are painted silver. They will attach to the side of Ravage's hip, and of course that won't get in the way of it in robot mode either. He comes with two pistols, nice enough sculpts. Nothing crazy or special about them, but nice enough. They'll fit in his hand by taking that small peg and plugging it in to the enclosed fist. You can also take the pistol and the missile and take this part of the pistol and plug it into the back for that. And you can have them attached, you know, to the side of his hip in the same way with the ensemble. And that's cool because it kind of, it kind of looks purposeful and it stores the pistol. So I dig that a great bit, actually. You get two forearm covers for their Megatron release. Paint it silver. As this doesn't belong to me, I'm not gonna do this. I'm afraid I won't be able to get it out, but that's the hole that you're trying to cover. You get an alternate helmet and head for Megatron, their release, and look, this helmet is painted nicely. It's silver and then you have the red and then the caution stripes on it. It's done very nicely. This is spectacular. It's extremely well done. Face is painted silver, eyes are painted metallic red, mouth is painted white, chin strap is painted black. The helmet has a gunmetal on it on the kind of base part of the helmet, and then the gray plastic with the gold accents painted throughout. The expression is great. This is awesome. Extremely, extremely, extremely well done, and then these side pieces here even articulate a bit. Very, very nice. And you can just swap that out on the ball peg. He also comes with a non-transforming Voss rifle for Megatron, sculpted well. We have the bipod element that swivels down. The pink paint is done well. We have like a metallic orange for the scope. And then you have this, this bit here with the little silver paint, which is a little cheesy. Like I feel like they could have put, thrown some really nice details on there or a nice, um, even a sticker could have been cool, but um, at least they did something. And yeah, it's, it's nice. Speaking of the rifle, it also comes with this handle. They don't really go over this in the instructions, but if you take the sniper rifle and you wedge this piece out, which is kind of the handle that was used, I guess, with the mold for the pet, then you could place this one in. And I'll tell you, it doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies to kind of do it because you get so much leverage with the top part of this plastic and it's such a tight fit, but there it is. I won't be taking this out. I'll be sending this back loose, but there it is. And when it's in use, Megatron will hold it just fine. Gimmicks wise, he will come apart in two. If you know, you know, there's a reason for it. No spoilers. And let's talk about the figure. So we have the head. It's a nice head sculpt. We do have some jaw movement on a hinge down here. Teeth are painted silver, eyes are painted metallic red, and it looks good. It's a very nice head sculpt, which is good because it's, you know, it's kind of the more indicative, in my opinion, uh, feel of Ravage for IDW and for this figure, so uh, it's appreciated. <laughs> but the articulation doesn't stop there, folks. We have a ball peg there on the back of the head. We have a hinge that goes into the neck, and then a separate hinge from the neck into the chest. So. Using all of them, you can get the head all the way up, so to speak, and down chin to chest. So no issues there. Swivel as well. That swivel takes place where the initial hinge is to the ball peg, which is smart. Works well. No issues. Good to go. Alrighty. So we have a waist swivel. That's on a ball peg. There's also a slight ab crunch here that I didn't mention. This whole upper piece will move down slightly over the abdomen, nothing really back. We have a universal joint for the shoulder, and the universal joint connects to a ball peg inside of the chest. 
the shoulder piece here is painted with this nice silver. It's like a darker, slightly darker silver, it looks like, than this outer silver, but it might be the same. It looks slightly darker to me. And then we have a copper here. So all that in concert, you get a little bit of a butterfly joint, a little bit back as well. You can get the arm out 90 degrees. You can get the swivel all the way around. No issues. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbow for the full run, coming down to the wrist. Just a swivel. I thought it was on a ball peg for some reason. Just a swivel. Same for the other side. We have this little silver paint down here and then the red. That works well enough. Universal joints for the hips. A little limited out to the side, but I don't think anything that will drive you nuts. Front and back, no big deal. Thigh swivel. Double jointed knee for the full run. The... Knee also swivels, so it kind of acts as an ankle swivel, but then you have an ankle swivel at the ball peg in the foot, so it's a little redundant. Nice silver paint down there. Ankle to goes down. Toes go up and down. Ankle goes up, and you get the slightest bit of a rocker, but you kind of are going to want a little bit more. For the tail, we have the two ball pegs that meet at one, and then it's ball peg, ball peg, ball peg, and then... Uh, ball bait, ball bait, ball bait. And they're just, you just swivel them around and then use the cut joint for it to kind of get the look that you want, which all works well. No issues. And, you know, there he is from the back. There he is from the front. Size comparison wise, we'll just sort of keep it consistent across the board. There he is with the IDW Megatron from MMC as well. I'm not sure why you'd want him in this kind of standing robot mode, but if you do, that's where he sizes up. So let's get him transformed. Lift up this neck flap here. This whole neck assembly will come out and raise the head up a taste. Then you can cover back down with the neck assembly so that it's now kind of in cat mode. For the forearms, make sure that you're looking at the top of the fist. The fists are on little ball pegs. They're just super tight. tight that I couldn't even adjust them earlier. Rotate the wrist portion, which houses the animal claws, to the front. And then they're on double hinges that'll rock down and sort of encapsulate the fist. You're going to want to do that on both sides. So swing the animal paws, dog paws, dog paws around, put it over top of the fist. Then for the legs, rotate at the knee, double hinge them back to make more of an animal look. You can rotate the foot around and then close in your heel spur. Once again, rotate at the knee, collapse it back on a double hinge, rotate the foot, collapse the heel spur. I'll clean them up, we'll take a look at them. So let's talk about cat mode a bit. The hinge swivel works for this as well. You can get the head pretty far over to the side and the opposite side. You can get it up a fair bit, down a fair bit, actually down a completely. The shoulders work the same way and then you can kind of, uh, I think you can adjust, yeah, you can adjust these like shoulder sleeves however you kind of see fit for the figure. All of this, the arm engineering works the same way, except you get an additional toe tilt, for lack of a better term, claw tilt maybe. More so down than up, unfortunately, where you kind of need the more up movement, but that's a bit of a bummer. Back legs work the same, except now you've lost the kind of motion of the knee. It now bends forward, so you just get it kind of anatomically correct, I guess, but you don't get the, the knee. I had a lot of dog's legs work. <laughs> It doesn't matter. All right, and then we have a toe tilt as well, and claw tilt, and these ball pegs back here, and then, of course, your tail articulates, and the waist articulation is still the same. So this, uh, you know, it, it works well enough. There's a couple of things I wish it had more of, but we'll, we'll get to that in final thoughts. But, yeah, you know, pretty decent. Size comparison-wise, there he is with Megatron, and I think that's probably totally appropriate. Maybe he's a little big, but I, it doesn't matter. It's good enough, for sure. But this isn't what you guys want to see. I know who you want to see. <laughs> Tiger tracks. Final thoughts-wise, let's start with the negatives. The biggest glaring negative for this guy are the lack of ankle rockers in the paw modes for the cat. It just kind of limits the level of coolness you can get out of the poses. Also, the proportions are a little weird in robot mode, but I don't really hold that against this mold. To be honest, I don't really have many issues with this. My issues are mainly with how it was used for the pet, and it was probably issues related specifically to the pet in order to get both of these to sort of work, I would imagine. But fortunately enough, 
for this representation of the character, those issues don't really get in the way a whole lot with the exception of those ankle rockers. Everything else I honestly think works fairly well. But let's get into that. So even though I think that this kind of does justice to one of the molds more so than the other, I still think that this is an example of using a mold twice and really making it appropriate for both. I've criticized MMC in the past for making a mold kind of shoehorn another character. It's a very Hasbro tactic. This one I feel like actually makes sense. They also did a fair amount of retooling between the two to even adjust elements of the engineering. Honestly, the, all right, let's get into it. Not a ton of paint, but more than I expect with reformatted stuff, and it's done well. The sculpt is good. The articulation is good, but unfortunately where it counts, it falls short a little bit, especially in cat mode more so than robot mode. The materials are decent enough, kind of standard MMC plastic, which is to say sturdy and solid. Decent enough presence. Alt mode works. The instructions are fair, but I'll tell you what it comes down to with this guy for me. He's 80 bucks, which I feel like is a little expensive for what you get here, especially when I've seen SH Figuarts go for 60. This doesn't feel as good and definitely not better than that. Let me tell you exactly how I view this. I view this as an upgrade set to Megatron. You get the extra head, you get the extra helmet, you get the gun, you get his pet, for lack of a better term, you get the forearm fillers, and in that regard, it makes it seem more worth it. So if you have the Megatron and there's things about the Megatron that you want to upgrade, I can recommend this. If you're just a Ravage fan, I'm not sure you'll be entirely satisfied. Decent enough figure though. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.